Hi, this is Cliff Bell and I'm a, a real estate agent with uh, Elizabeth Alcott and Associates in Napa, California. And today's uh, episode is about your first house should be a house hack. And in my case, my next house will be. Um, so first I'll talk about what a house hack is and why a house hack builds wealth so well versus a traditional single family home or a condominium. And then I'll, I'll actually back it up with some summary of a financial model to show you how I come up with that information. And then I'll describe the different types of house hacks. And lastly, there's some short term trade offs. I don't want to make it all sound like it's all perfect. There, there are trade offs, but I'll go into that in detail. And so let me start with what is a house hack? So what is a house hack? Well, a house hack is when your primary residence is also a rental property. Um, there's typically two types of house hacks. Um, one is that you've got like a duplex or up to a fourplex. Uh, that's a single family, you know, where you treat it as your primary residence and then you rent out the rest of that. And the second one, um, which is also possible but less less common probably is when you buy a house and then rent out the rooms to uh, people that you know so that they help cover um, the mortgage costs. That's really the bottom line is uh, having some rental income to help offset the cost of buying a home. Um, and again, a house in my opinion, a house hack allows you to qualify soon, sooner because you get credit for the income across the property. So you end up uh, being able to uh, afford a, a house that's worth a little bit more money or a building, I should say, that's worth a little bit more money. So that's that's what a house hack is. So what? Why a house hack does? Why does it build wealth so well? Well, the income from a house hack allows you to buy a more expensive property. Therefore, your basis upon which the appreciation is occurring is a bigger number. So that tends to uh, build wealth. Um, you also learn the value of real estate investing. I think that's a good uh, experiment, or not experiment, but good good learning experience. And um, you get to depreciate part of the investment that's actually, this is only true on the duplex model, not in the renting out your home. But you can uh, uh, write off the um, one side of the duplex, for example, if um, that you're not living in. And that, again, increases your tax savings that you get from um, owning real estate. So that's another financial benefit that you get gain in tax savings. So you're building equity with somebody else paying for it, and you're also building equity with you paying your portion of it. Um, so the monthly outflow you pay is reduced by the rental income, and you get the tax savings. So there's extra savings in addition to a more traditional um, home purchase. Um, and here's the other thing. Over time, the rents go up, which is if you're a renter already, you know that that's the situation. So your rents go up on the portion that you're renting. Your payment is a fixed, I'm, I'm assuming you do a fixed mortgage. So actually the amount that you pay as a portion of the total mortgage actually drops over time. So that's, I think, a really cool benefit for uh, why a house help, helps build wealth. Okay, so now I'm gonna, here's a summary of financial model. And I, I, and I picked numbers that just, there were rough estimates uh, of things. I just trying to, and I'm trying to use round numbers. So I, I, I said buy a, a duplex for $500,000 with $100,000 down, 20%, that way there's no taxes on that. And assume the monthly payment for a 7%, 30 years is $3,328 a month with taxes and insurance added into that. Um, I made an assumption that the property had a one bedroom unit and a two bedroom unit and that you would live in the one bedroom unit. Um, again, I'm thinking for single first time home buyers or even a couple um, getting into that. And you know, maybe then if they have kids, they could switch and go to the two bedroom side without having to buy another property and rent out the one bedroom. But for this example, I'll just assume to stay in it for five years and you rent the two bedroom for 2000 a month. And you, actually, that means because you're getting 2000 a month, your payment is actually only $1,328 a month, which for buying a home for $500,000, having that amount that's technically what you have to pay since you're renting the other part out, um, makes that a very good uh, benefit. Um, in five years, I made an assumption, which I think is conservative, that rent will go up only 15%. And so that would make um, the rent being 2300 and now your portion over five years has dropped to 
$28 a month, which is amazing. Now you're down to less than a, you know, roughly less than a third of the payment is actually yours. And you've appreciated a house, if you assume it goes with a nationwide average of 4% a year, that that duplex is now worth 608000 So you've gained $108,000 in equity. You've only had to pay for a third of the mortgage. Um, bottom line, lower payments, more wealth. Can't go wrong with that. Okay. Okay, let's talk about the different types of house hacks. And, and my favorite is the duplex, um, not the triplex or fourplex wouldn't be there, but it just, um, they're the kind of the sweet spot of being able to do this, but not having to pay for the price of a fourplex. But the benefits probably on the rent actually, often in some cases in a fourplex case, you actually end up having to not pay anything. All the other three units are paying for your total mortgage. So that's something to consider and look at each uh, situation independently. Um, and this is likely, like I said, to be my next purchase. It's my favorite. Um, allows me to buy my next property quicker. It's not just for the first time home buyer, the house act, but it's, for me as a real estate investor, it allows me to buy homes on a more rapid pace because I, I don't have to qualify for nearly as much income. The, you know, it's a little bit more down payment, but that's fine with me. Um, again, buying the other option is to buy out um, a, a buy a home and then rent out a room. Um, and again, I recommend this for first time buyers, partially because when I think of first time home buyers in general, they're closer to college age. And my strategy in life in general is try, try not when you start earning money to immediately raise your standard of living. It's like only spend what you need. What you could get by in college was probably your lowest expense level and try to stay as close to that as you can. So again, it, it's, you know, the people who might be first time home buyers are closer to college age than others. And so it might be sense, make sense that since you're used to being in a, a dorm setting, it's kind of similar to a dorm setting, a small dorm. Um, so it's similar to college. So I, that's again why I recommend it because from a lifestyle perspective, often those people are renting with other people. It's a, a shared rental situation. And so when they buy the house, having a shared uh, experience is not that much different and again it's building wealth more than you could so take advantage of your lifestyle change I think that really works out really well so it isn't always perfect the house hack there are short-term trade-offs for long-term gain um, the short I'll start with the pain um, initially you, you live in a shared property and you know maybe the American dream is that you have your own home and it doesn't kind, kind of feel like your own home you're either sharing a building with someone so it kind of have your own space but it's shared with somebody else or if you actually have somebody living in your home it's kind of, it's not that and you might need to mow the yard for all the property not just your portion of the property so you're putting in a little sweat equity I'll call it um, by maintaining the whole yard you also have to maintain the two properties or in, in either in one building or separate buildings. So you're actually doing twice the work from a standpoint of if the toilet needs fixed or if you're going to upgrade the kitchen cabinets or something like that from because they need, they need repaired or whatever. So you get into a little extra repairs that you might have versus a single family home. Um, and being a landlord is an additional job. And so that's an adjustment. But I think it's a great learning experience and the sooner you do that, the better you opportunity you have to build wealth as a real estate investor, which I recommend. Um, but however, there are gains. You're paying less than a half the mortgage. That's assuming a split duplex two and two or something like that. But in my example, you're paying a third. So that's a, definitely, in my mind, a plus. Um, you're appreciating a much higher value than if you just bought a single family home because you typically bought a higher value property because you're getting rent. So your income allows you to buy a higher one than you uh, would otherwise. Um, you have amazing tax savings that you get far beyond just owning a single family home. And in the future, you may be able to refinance the mortgage and buy another uh, property sooner because again you're appreciating but you're actually paying lower amounts so if you were to buy a second one similar to the first one um, you will be able to potentially be able to refinance the um, first investment property take out the cash and actually use that to buy the second one um, and then further increase your wealth again um, again you get to buy the other advantages. You get to have an owner-occupied interest rate, which is typically a quarter percent or more sometimes, but usually a quarter percent less than a investment property. 
um, and you're actually get away with usually investment properties require a little bit more down as a percentage um, whereas an owner occupied you can get by with less so it's tons of benefits there could be less down payment anyway I hope you liked the video don't forget to give it a like and don't forget to subscribe